Hello friends and welcome back to another video and today we're talking 2022 plans. It's chaotic. <laughs> I have a problem and that problem is I own too many books that I haven't read. I'm gonna preface this by saying this is not a judgment upon anybody else if you own more books on your shelves than I do that are unread that's totally cool. If you don't feel overwhelmed by that and are totally fine with it, that's cool. The problem is for me is I'm overwhelmed by it. I'm in this position right now where I find myself not picking books up because I am too stressed out about how many books are actually on my shelf. So because of that, 2022 is going to be the year that I try and fix it. How, you ask? Well, insanity. <laughs> so how am I going to do that? Well, my goal this year is to read my entire physical TBR. Is that insane? Probably. <laughs> I, I think that I, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. It's a lot of books. I currently have 272 unread books physically on my TBR. I've been doing a lot of databasing in the last month trying to get a grasp of what my physical TBR looks like. I have gone through and um, put every single book that I own that I haven't read into my story graph and also into my Notion. I have been tracking the number of pages every book has been is and because I can't do anything half-ass, <laughs> I also have been databasing um, the audiobook links for every unread book that I have, genre, the rough page numbers, if it's got an audiobook or not, basically any sort of information that I could get about the books so I can have a better understanding of what I'm trying to tackle, I've databased into my Notion. So how many books are we looking at? Well, it's 272 unread books currently on my physical TBR, which works out to roughly 88,000 pages. Or if we're talking audiobook numbers, we're looking at roughly 2,548 hours of audiobooks. Um, that's not including the fact that I listen to them at usually 2 to 2.5 speed, so that number is a little bit skewed. And also, I have 30 books on this list that don't have audiobooks. And I also have come to decide that my... I'm not going to not allow myself to buy books. I'm going to still be buying books, but I'm going to try and limit myself to only new releases this year. I have a set list that I've been tracking of all my most anticipated new releases for the year, which I will be sharing with you all tomorrow. So I have this list of books that I'm going to allow myself to buy, and then I also have these 272 books. So I set my story graph goal to 300 books. Is that insane? Yeah, it's insane. I also set it to 100,000 pages, which works out to roughly 273 pages that I have to read a day. I'm looking at roughly seven hours of audiobooks a day, not reducing them down by speed. So if you divide that in half, it's three and a half hours. If you divide it by 2.5, we're looking at roughly like three hours of reading a day, which actually when I think about it in that way, feels a lot more achievable. And that's part of the reason why I databased all of this because I needed some bite size information of like, okay, well, what do I need to achieve every day, every week, every month, and every quarter to be able to actually do what I think think I want to do. Now, I say that the goal is 300 books, but I also want to make it super clear that I'm super willing to DNF any of these. And if I DNF them, I'm not going back. I'm just going to let them go. I have books on these shelves that I know that I want to read. But honestly, if I'm not jiving with a book, that's okay. And so I say that I'm going to want to read 300 books this year, but if the end, end number ends up being 250 because I DNF'd 50 books and they weren't for me, that's okay. 
I'm gonna allow myself to do that. This is not like a, I feel like I'm gonna fail if I don't get to that final number of 300 or that final number of 100,000 pages, but at least I now know roughly what I'm working with to be able to get to that point. By databasing everything that I own, um, including their genre types and whether or not they have audiobooks, if they're classics, um, I've been able to kind of figure out how many of each of these kind of categories I should kind of divide up by month so that I'm not overwhelmed. I have a lot of books on these shelves that are over 500 pages and a lot of them that are under 250 pages and if I read all my 250 page books at the beginning of the year then at the end of the year I'll be stuck reading everything that's over 500 pages and I don't really want to do that. I, I want to make sure that I'm reading kind of a variety every single month so that I don't get overwhelmed one month with the task of reading like a bunch of uh, Victorian literature that I have on my shelves because I went and read all of the easy books at the beginning. These are the categories that I've kind of been tracking. So I have book of the month books, books between 400 and 500 pages, books that are over 500 pages, books that are under 250 pages, books with no audiobooks, classic books, memoirs, nonfiction, and romances. These are the kind of categories where I'm like, I want to make sure that I have spaced these out because for romance like I could easily spend the entire month and read all of my romances on the shelf but then I won't have any to read for the rest of the year and I know that that would make me sad. I want to read a new romance every month so I'm gonna try and divide it up kind of like this. So these are my general rules. I need to read five book of the month books a month to be able to meet my quota of reading all of them by the end of the year. I have to read two books that are over 400 pages a month. I need to read two books that are over 500 pages a month. And I'm only allowing myself a maximum of five books that are under 250 pages a month so that I can still make sure that I'm meeting my page goals and that the shorter books are spread out. I'm going to try and read three books a month that have no audiobooks. Um, audiobooks have become like my main way of how I like to read now. So to be able to kind of like sh make sure that I'm not stuck with nothing that I can listen to at the end of the year, we're going to spread those out. I need to read four classics a month and this is kind of going to break up into like smaller categories. I have a bunch of classic ancient literature books that I um, have and I want to read one of those a month um, because I have 12 of them. I have all six Jane Austen novels, so I'm going to read one every other month. I have um, eight children's books that are classics, so I'm going to kind of try to spread those out every other month or so. And then I have like 15 books that are in the like just general classics um, realm, which I'm going to try and make sure that I read at least one of those a month as well. As for romances, I am going to try and limit myself to two to three romances a month. Um, I have some new releases that are coming out next year of romances that I'm really stoked for, so this number will kind of balance itself out, I think, with those purchases. So it might end up working out to being like three romances a month, but I'm going to try and just keep it there so that I can make sure that I have new ones to read all the time. And then finally, I'm going to try and make sure that I read one memoir a month and one nonfiction book a month. I have exactly t almost 12 of each of these, <laughs> luckily. So um, that's great. And also for the book club that I'm in, a lot of these um, fall into that book club category. So I've already got determined months in which I'm going to be reading them, which makes it a lot easier. So those are kind of the rules that I'm working with right now under my umbrella. I am trying to make sure to um, diversify everything that I'm reading every month so that I'm reading a variety of things so I'm not getting overwhelmed. And these are kind of the structure that I've set up with myself so that I can then now go into my um, TBR shelf and be like, okay, well, I need to find a book that's over 500 pages. Let's pick one. And then I've got a shorter list that I can go through. And this is just kind of a way to try and help me make my ginormous list a little bit more achievable. I am 
think that like when you see a list of like 300 books and I'm like, how the fuck am I going to decide where to start with? So within these rules and parameters, now I know kind of where to start. And then the last thing that I'm planning on doing this year for um, my reading goals, I'm actually going to start a reading journal. I track like most of my stuff, obviously, like I've said before in my computer, my um, Notion database is ridiculous. If you guys want to see a video about that, let me know in the comments down below and I can do a whole walkthrough of my Notion. But I am going to start writing all of my reviews in a bullet journal and I even figured out how to print these little stickers of the books that I've read. Spoiler alert, the first book that I read this year was Hail Mary by Auntie Weir. Um, and this will help me just for like videos when I need to recap what I'm reading. And I think it'll be fun to have little bite-sized information bits about what it is that I have been reading during the year. So I'm also going to be doing that. That's my other goal for 2022. But now for the fun part, I'm going to walk you guys through my bookshelves and I'm going to show you every single book that I own that I haven't read and this is going to be a call out for me so that you guys can keep me accountable. And then at the end of the year, we can revisit this and we can see <laughs> how well I did. <laughs> the Girl Who Saved the King of Sweden by Jonas John Hansen. Down Under Travels in a Sunburned Country by Bill Bryson. Just Haven't Met You Yet by Sophie Cousins. The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson. The Possession of Mr. Cave by Matt Haig. Beautiful Country by Sean Julie Wang. Untamed by Glennon Doyle. The Case for Jamie by Brittany Cavallero. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami, The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo, A Faux Love Story by Lone Lee, The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card, You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria, We Write Upon Sticks by Quam Berry, The Down Days by Ilze Hugo, Summer by Ali Smith, Under the Rainbow by Celia Lasky, Severance by Ling Ma, Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse. Writers and Lovers by Lily King, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne, Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby, Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Shua Dusupin, The Comeback by Ella Berman, Coral Reefs, A Short Introduction, The Boyfriend Project by Farah Rochin, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I have actually technically read this. I've read it multiple times, but I've never read it outside of school, so we're going to try it again this year. The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan, The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, Dominicana by Angie Cruz, Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder, 1984 by George Orwell, another one that I've actually read before in high school but I haven't read in a really long time so I want to try and read it again. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgins Burnett, The Sentence is Death by Anthony Horowitz, The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, Winter Counts by David Heska Wanobli Whedon, What Comes Next by Joanne Tonkins, Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Menensala, Once Upon a Time I Lived on Mars by Kate Green, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro, The Sympathy by Viet Thang Nguyen, Luster by Raven Leilani, A Burning by Mega Manjumdar, Homegoing by Ya Jesse, Shoko's Smile by Choi Yun Young, A Question of Holmes by Brittany Cavallero, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Anthony Conan Doyle, The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, All My Punny Sorrows by Miriam Toes, Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica Lee, Dead Man Walking by Rachel Matlow, This Close to Okay by Lisa Cross Smith, The 100 Year Old Man Who Jumped, Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Stone Hansen, Insomnia by Stephen King, once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. Twelve Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. Emma by Jane Austen. What is the What by Dave Eggers. Calypso by David Sedaris. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asimon. All Along You Were Blooming by Morgan Harper Nichols. The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. Ovid's Metamorphosis. Medea and Other Plays by Euripides. Longest Daphnis and Chloe. Euripides Hercules and other plays, The Trojan Women and other plays, Euripides, Apollos's The Golden Ass, The Homeric Hymns, Apollonus and Rhodes, Jason and the Golden Fleece, Aristophanes and Hyginus's Constellation Myths, Apollodorus's The Library of Greek Mythology, Lord of the Flies by William Golding, Stephen King on Writing, Once Upon a Time in Carrotland by Josh Carrot, Ariel by Sylvia Plath, The End We Start From by Megan Hunter, Boys of Alabama by Jenna Neve Hudson, We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lange, Ready Player One and Ready Player Two both by Ernest Klein, Wild Game by by Adrian Broder, Other Minds, The Octopus, The Sea, and The Deep Origins of Consciousness by Peter Godfrey Smith, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, The Floating Feldmans by Elisa Fridlin, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, Love and Olives, Love and Luck, and Love and Gelato, all by Jenna 
Danielle Benz Welch, Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan Hessian, East of Eden by John Steinbeck, Persuasion by Jane Austen, We the Drowned by Carson Jensen, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Dotty, Reading Sweet Grass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, Eat a Peach by David Chang, the Secret History by Donna Tartt, Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, The Hobbit, Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King, all by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, The People We Keep by Alison Larkin, Sharks in the Times of Saviors by Kawhi Strong Washburn, All Adults Here by Emma Straub, Frederick Bachman, Anxious People, Head Over Heels by Hannah Orstein, Black Sunday by Tola Rotomi Abraham, Autumn by Ali Smith, Lamb by Christopher Moore, No One Is Too Small to Make a Difference by Greta Thunberg, The Oil Man and the Sea by Arno Kopecki, The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Carr, The Gunkel by Stephen Rowley, The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Elisa Sloan, The Chicken Sisters by K.J. Del Antonia, The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, No Presents Please by Giant Kikini, Olive by Emma Gannon, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James, What's Mine and Yours by Name Acoster, The Scoop by Zoe Lyons, Heidi by Joanna Spirey, Ghost Forest by Pick Shen Feng, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, Homie by Denez Smith, Thin Girls by Diana Clark, The Tradition by Jericho Brown, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, Wow No Thank You by Samantha Irby, Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Burton, Greek Gods and Heroes by Robert Graves, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, The Last of August by Brittany Cavallero, Fraternity by Benjamin Nugent, Double Blind by Edward St. Aubin, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, Butter Honey Pick Bread by Francesca Ikuazi, Beasts of a Little Land by Juhaya Kim, Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen, The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, With Teeth by Kristen Arnett, Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rivka Brunt, The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros, Spring by Ali Smith, Winter by Ali Smith, Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey, The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr., The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, Where to Go Bernadette by Maria Semple, Sankofa by Chimundo Anuzo, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility, The Mystery of Henry Pick by David Funkinos, All My Mother's Lovers by Alana Massad, Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers, Wait for It by Jen McKinley, Marine Biology, A Very Short Introduction, For the Coffee Gets Cold by Tushikazu Kawaguchi, On Island by Pat Carney, Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson, Daughters of the Deep by Rick Riordan, The Layover by Lacey Walden, Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward, Tin Man by Sarah Winman, The Kindest Lie by Nancy Johnson, The Body by Stephen King, The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, Breathless by Jennifer Niven, The Weekend by Charlotte Wood, Memorial by Brian Washington, the Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset by Annie Lyons. Sheets by Brenna Thumler. Olga Dies Dreaming. Blonde Roots by Bernadine Evaristo. The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. The Air Affair by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. The Little Mermaid and Other Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. Anne of Green Gables by L. M. Montgomery. Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Oseman. The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delila Harris. The Girls by Emma Klein. Sacre Bleu by Christopher Moore. The Boat People by Sharon Bala. Brother by David Cariandi. The Fisherman by Chigozi Obioma. Summer Assault by Katrina Leno, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben, A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero, The Marrow Thieves by Terry Dimeline, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel, Too Much Lit by Melissa Lukanchenko, Albatross by Terry Fallis, Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell, A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers, The Vigilant Principal by Mark Carson, Piranesi by Susanna Clark, A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert, Do You Take This Man, Ellie Moon by Chantal Eustace, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Fine, Kim Ji Young, Born 1982 by Cho Namju. The Word is Murder and Make Pine Murders, both by Anthony Horowitz. The Ties That Tether by Jane Icaro. The Old Man and His Sons by Heowen Brew. A Connecticut Yankee of King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. The Long Walk by Stephen King, written as Richard Bachman. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. The X Hex by Aaron Sterling. Circe by Madeline Miller. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Split Tooth by Tanya Taka. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Under the Wave at Waimea by Paul Theroux. The Apollo Murders by Chris Hadfield. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dodachewski. Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. North Anger Abbey by Jane Austen. Lanny by Max Porter. Stan Grant's Tell It to the World with my sister's sticky notes all over it. <laughs> From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dotty. Jojo Moyes, The Giver of Stars, Trans Wizard, Harriet Porber, and the bo Bad Boy Parasaurolophilus by Chuck Tingle, The Switch by Beth O'Leary, Soul Tourist and Mr. Loverman, both by Bernadine Evaristo, Yume by Sifton Tracy Annapair, The Death of Vivek Ochi by Kweke Amezi, Big Summer by Jennifer Wiener, Outlawed by Anna North, The Deep by Rivers of Solomon, Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams, Watershed by Doreen Vanderstoop, A Little Hope by Ethan Joella, The Dutch House by Anne Patchett, Infinite Country by Patricia Engel, Educated by Tara Westover, The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley, and lastly, One Day in December, a novel by Josie Silver.
we did it. <laughs> that's everything that's actually physically on the shelves. And then I also have um, 13 books here that I haven't actually got physically with me that are either on my Kindle or on my audiobook services or are in the mail, including Disability Visibility by Alice Wong, Cultish by Amanda Montel, I Am Not Your Baby Mother by Candace Braithwaite, Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, Headscarves and Hymens by Mona Ethwai, Push Out by Monique Morris, Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass, Heroes by Stephen Fry, Troy by Stephen Fry, Against the Loveless World by Susan Abu Hawa sorry if I mispronounced that, and then Punching the Air by Yousef Salam. A lot of those are book club books, um, reads for our book club next year. But those are all of the books that I own that I'm going to try and get through. Am I crazy? I feel like I am. Am I still gonna do it? I'm gonna try. As of today on January 6th, I am currently on track with my page numbers every day. I mean, we're only a week into this, so that's not that big of an accomplishment, but I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna try and ride this momentum. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've seen your favorite book of all time on this shelf, and I've shown it to you during this, and you're like, oh my gosh, you have to read that. Let me know down below so that I can prioritize it. But that's all I have for you in today's video. I will see you all tomorrow with my list of anticipated reads. It'll be my last video in this series that I'm doing of um, wrap-up videos for 2021. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you all tomorrow, and yeah, bye!